Hello and welcome to Frank Fridays. My name is Carlina Moeller and I am the founder of Art Frankly. I'd like to introduce my collaborator, Ellie Hayworth of Hayworth Communications Consultancy. Ellie has grown her business to command a full scope of client services, including public speaking, speaking engagements, business strategy, events, public relations, you name it, Ellie can help you. And today we are so delighted because we get to chat with Austin Fremont, who was born and raised in the center of the New York art world. A great combination of influence and inspiration stems from Austin's friends, her family, and her, co and her colleagues, including her godfather, who was Andy Warhol. In 2014, Austin co-founded Fremont Blue Events. Since its inception, Austin has led her team to produce hundreds of small and large scale events for a range of brands and nonprofit clients. Ellie has some really great questions for Austin, so I will let Ellie get this started. Amazing. Hi, Austin. It's really exciting to chat with you today. So happy to be here. Chatting is um, one of my hobbies. <laughs> well, great. So then I'll just go ahead and kick us off. Um, so as Carlina mentioned, you founded Fremont Blue Events, um, and it is, it was, basically founded in collaboration with the arts PR agency, Blue Medium. You were complementing, you know, a lot of the needs in the PR and communication sector. The PR sector really and events at large has shifted so significantly since the founding. Can you just tell us a little bit about how the company has grown and what projects you've come to command? Yeah, um, we started with the intention of certainly collaborating more often than we do now. Certainly we're okay. still affiliated and we're sister companies and um i you know we refer each other and, and there's yeah. actually a, we have a third sister bauer blue who does a lot of our um you know film production um when we need it um but you know like any any plan um things change according to what what comes our way Thanks. so so yeah so we we have i you know, it's hard. I'm always like pre-COVID, you know, like BC, before COVID, we <laughs> did X, Y, and Z. So we um, we started working, actually, we did work on the uh, relaunch of the LGBT Center back in, I think it was 2014. Um, and we collabed with Blue Medium and they kind of handled the PR aspect of that um, reopening. But then we continued um, with the center. So um, beyond that and kind of um, it with the exception of this COVID year uh, for the past six years have collaborated with them on their fundraising events and, and worked projects. So um, one thing leads to another. We've been so fortunate that um, we've rarely, I think we've done like three actual RFPs in our entire wow, yeah. <laughs> um, history. Um, Everything is really word of mouth um, yep. or word of my mouth since I do a lot of talking, but um, <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, that's the, the highest compliment to have people because we understand, especially with kind of these, well, with anything, because if we're, you're trusting us with your brand or your fundraiser, um, we understand how important the night is for you and we, t we take it very seriously. And it's really the highest, highest compliment when someone not only asks us to work with them again, but tells the, you know, another executive director that they're friendly with that they should work with us. So that I always take as the, the highest form of flattery. Yeah, uh, maybe you can just like bring us under the hood a little bit, like tell us, I mean, events is a very big umbrella catch all, but like, what are some of the things that are either most exciting to you that you guys undertake regularly? Like just give us a little synopsis of your scope of work. Sure. We do a lot of the not exciting things too. Yeah. Uh, and we do them very well. Um, so first I'll say, you know, we do things, anything from income tracking, guest list management, guest communication, and those are kind of the behind the scenes, but they sure. set, you know, they set the organization up for one, a good guest experience because the communication's regular they know who they can reach out to with questions and things like that. Sure. But our favorite thing to do is to um, create an atmosphere and watch it come alive and then see people in a room enjoying the signature cocktail we came up with um, yeah. and, you know, admiring the table 
settings or thinking about how clever the takeaway is, all those things um, that kind of like lead to a good party um, are our favorite things, like really decor and like creative ideas. And that's why we do, um, you know, with large scale galas, we do partner with different, you know, flower vendors and sure, uh, sure. design and fabrication studios if need be, because we're focused so much on a lot of that um, administrative side of um, fundraising events or benefits. Um, but when we, uh, when we get to do a lot of work with brands, it is like our focus is completely the aesthetic and yeah. the guest experience. And so we really, really enjoy um, working on projects like that. That sounds very cool. And I, you know, you're making me a bit nostalgic over here. I think we've all experienced some of that this past year. Um, Austin, you know, a lot of amazing events companies and production houses have pivoted their programming, um, obviously, because their clients have needed to, and we haven't been convening in person. So are there any kind of fun projects or, or you know, pivots that you guys have made that you're particularly proud of? Um, yeah, well... Our biggest pivot is we now do a lot of um, boxes. You're currently yeah. sitting on a box. Um, yeah. So obviously everyone kind of orders everything now, but- um, Which means you're now a fulfillment agency as well. We are, we're uh, fulfillment and shipping, packing and shipping. I hear um, you. But beyond, beyond, you know, party boxes, which we design um, yeah. for our clients and then obviously coordinate delivery, which we do do in um, my Kenny Scharf car just to be extra art world. Um, I love it. We roll around the city in that. Um, but we also, we've kind of taken our creativity, whereas normally we like conceptualize an entire room and, and get everything that goes into that. We've kind of shrunk it down into like this sure. box world. So like <laughs> we now do like box, creative box proposals. So like those are our new yeah. like, event proposals. Um, so that, and obviously we have been doing, you know, some virtual, I wouldn't put it on my list of favorite things, sure. um, but I, you know, I understand we, you know, there's literally the show must go on um, regardless of having this kind of um, weird time. And, and I, I am hopeful, you know, we are getting back to normal, um, but you know, yeah. not yeah. there yet. No, no, that makes perfect sense. Um, maybe you can watch it. Like, I know your typical day, there's probably no typical day, but maybe just walk us through what kind of a day in the life of Austin Fremont looks like. Well, I try to work out. Yeah. And I also try to shower after that workout. And sometimes it doesn't happen. Um, <laughs> but we, I come to the office, we, ha we usually have at least, I mean, four to five calls probably we try to keep them to half an hour rarely do they stick to that um and then yeah we're just working we definitely I always am um trying to distract my team yeah <laughs> um and I really believe that you know we are not doing brain surgery here so we should be laughing events are you know by nature, a very stressful industry. Yeah, yeah, so absolutely. much rides on it, but they're also really funny, and I think you can find humor in everything. Um, so that's really important to me. Um, so, um, yeah, like I got off track, obviously, but there's there is no typical day because the needs of our clients change. So I can come in. Um, I haven't crossed a single thing off um, of my to do list today, and I've been working since ten a.m. Yep. So. Um, yeah. that's just because other things come up that are more urgent or need my attention. Yep. And, um, I will get through the to-do list before I leave today. Cause it's all stuff that must be done today. But yeah, I, I, there, what I do like about events too, is that there is no, there's no monotony for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And certainly not when you're faced with a global pandemic that has just continued to shift what the expectations of really the expectations are day after day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Austin, you, as I think Carlina alluded to in your bio, um, you have a very artsy family. Your sister is a part of the art production fund. We spoke with Kathleen Lynch for one of the Frank Fridays, you know, a few weeks ago. Um, your parents are very involved with different arts philanthropies. Your godfather was Andy Warhol, which is no small name to drop. 
Um, just tell me a little bit about like what it's like growing up with such an artsy family and what that involvement continues to look like for you guys. Yeah, I actually, like any good kid, rebelled against the art yeah. world. Um, I wanted to be a psychiatrist or a lawyer or, you know. Yeah. Not anything but. Um, however, I, um, I appreciate it because now when I am doing things creatively, um, you know, I lean on a lot of the inspiration that I was surrounded by growing up, kind of the... Um, I think artists and creatives in general just have a different way of viewing the world than someone who, say, has that, like, finance brain. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not that you can't have both. Not that, you know, they're mutually mm -hmm. exclusive. But we have a different way of approaching things. I have a very, like, pragmatic brain, too. But uh, yeah. then that's, I need that for organizing events and timelines and staying on top of eight different organizations, production timelines. But um I think the influence of growing up in a, in a family that looked at things from all different angles and saw all, really helps me um, be able also from a brand perspective to go to different brands and like be able to execute a Schwinn bicycle event and then also like a, um, you know, ski resort event yeah. and being able to tailor things in a in a um, in a brand specific way um and, and maintaining the integrity of the brand um in that but um yeah and and now I appreciate it and I um uh, as Carlina knows uh avoided the art world for many many years working in it sure because I had because of my family being so involved I had all the uh, benefits without, you know, hanging out with cool artists, hanging out with creative people, um, going to awesome parties without having to deal with any of the art world drama. Like I, <laughs> I still, I still consider myself art world adjacent, even though yeah. like a lot of, you know, my friends are certainly in the center. Um, and I kind of like, I like being there. I don't yeah. need to be any further in the circle. I don't yeah. think. Yeah, so you typically, your kind of client uh, strata, if you will, tends to be brands. Like, tell us a little bit more about just like who some of the people, obviously with discretion as needed, but like, who are some of the people you partner with? Yeah, we, well, we find that, because um, the part of my bio that um, Carlina didn't get to um, was <laughs> that, um, you know. Well, we're I getting to it now, in, Austin. <laughs> I started that I started I've been in production forever but at first it was kind of in an editorial and advertorial uh capacity with print print shoots and, and things and then I was at a PR company and just was listening to publicists plan events and I was like I can just do that let me just do that let me and so I ended up starting a uh uh, department at the PR agency and events oh, cool. so that's kind of how I like pivoted from like these kind of 2D to, to full yeah. on 3D. Um, and so I have a lot of friends that I used to work with at that PR agency and they've gone to other PR agencies. And so that's, again, that networking um, yeah. my business now, Very um, of people coming back to me that now work at different agencies. Um, so we work with a ton of PR agencies, not a ton, that was such an exaggeration. We work with a few PR agencies. Um, <laughs> Gobs and gobs. A hand selection. You know, like everyone knows us, everyone. Um, uh, but we have a really great relationship with 160 over 90, um, Edelman, Turner PR. Um, I used to work with Missy Farron PR. Um, yeah, to name a few. There's That's a few. Great. That's um, great. But the brand, brand wise, you know, and then we have a relationship with Dick's Sporting Goods, which is, you know, probably the polar opposite, I would say, of the art world. Um, but that's also really fun because again, going back to your day being different, we're going from, you know, talking to the new museum to like hopping on the phone about the new, you know, men's brand from Dick's Sporting Goods versed and talking about that. Like, so it just really, your mind's constantly going and thinking and, and often it's, it's cool how you can pull from yeah. one place and, and, and make it work for, for something else and find inspiration in a client that, you know, for another client that is totally unrelated.
Yeah, I think that's so cool. No, I, I very much appreciate like learning on the fly and having that level of diversity where, you know, you're not siloed in, in so many capacities. So it's very fun. No, yeah. Anytime anyone says like, oh, so like what kind of events do you do? I'm like, you know, benefits, galas, brand activation, small intimate dinners, cocktails, and anything you'll pay us to do. Yeah, you know, anything else. Like- There's a mixed bag. <laughs> Yeah, we've done Sweet Sixteens. We've done, um, we did a um, cocktail party for um, Art for Dogs. I mean, we have done, you know, we do kit. We, when we were, you know, in BC before Corona, when there was, um, you know, we used to do kids parties at the center, you know, once a month on the weekends, yeah. you know, so we really, and we love a challenge. Like, even if it's something we've never tackled before, like, we will figure it out. That is part of the job of an event person yeah. is to be resourceful. Um, and so, yeah. And to do, you know, crisis, crisis management on the fly. Always. Yeah. There's always a fire. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it's, I, it sounds like a really stimulating day and, you know, it's exciting to hear what you guys have your hands in. Um, Austin, we are coming back to like kind of a sense of normalcy. We're starting to see things like freeze, having in-person art fairs, obviously, in a very limited and very high touch, or actually high touch, low touch capacity, high touch in your intake, low touch in terms of people. Um, But just how are you guys starting to navigate that, that return to normalcy? And what do you hope to see for the future? Yeah, we've actually seen in the past few weeks, um, I've probably done three or four different proposals for in-person. Wow. Um, so we're getting there. Starting, starting in June, I think is kind of the, um, that first week of June, we have three back-to-back in-person events. So wow. we are definitely seeing, uh, people are ready. I think I I've said this the whole time throughout the pandemic, like we are taking two different temperatures. One is the physical temperature yeah. and yeah. then there's emotional temperature yeah for example I'm I'm way more comfortable personally um, working an event than attending an event Um, because working I'm focused I know if I just wash my hands I know if I uh, you know I have my mask on if I'm drinking you know even when I've had a couple drinks during this pandemic and I you know take an Uber I'm like oh my god did I wash my hands what, what happened like you know like there's just um, so I think, you know, really, I think the, 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 we're seeing a lot of hybrid stuff too, streaming part of the program, yeah, you know, yeah. the, the challenge too, with, from a fundraising perspective, media events generally skew on the 10 to 15 to 20 people. It's not like yeah, that, we yeah. do, that we do. So, you know, that, that scale isn't scary. It's, um, you know, the larger, benefits um that uh I think are going to be more of a challenge yeah yeah Yeah. I can I can absolutely see that um Austin we love to like round out with a handful of like professional practice questions so I'm curious is there something that you do every day that you think is kind of critical to your success I'm going to go back to the laughing and keeping it like keeping it in perspective, because it's very easy to get wrapped up um, in the stress of it. And, you know, and it's not to say I don't have times where I'm not like, oh, God, oh, God. But like taking a step back and, and um, really assessing, like, does this need, like, what is this all? Like, just get, trying to maintain some sort of perspective. Um, also like really, I am, um, naturally like an empath of super, probably too much. So empathetic yeah. person. So, but I find that, uh, I really try to get to know my clients because mm-hmm. I, that I'm going to be able to, um, deliver information better that way, yeah. anticipate their needs better, um, and that makes everything smoother because a lot of times we always say like, like we're, we're like event doulas, like a lot of the time, you know, it's someone else's, yeah. event, but we're kind of helping guide them. And so that it's not this like 
horribly traumatic yeah. <laughs> process and I, we also think that like events are like giving birth so it's like you know you have the you know there's so much unknown um you don't know what's going to happen everything's scary and stressful leading up and then you have the event and everything that was scary and stressful becomes funny yeah and everything that you know and, and then you had this great event and everything everything worked out in the end and then you forget how crazy it was and you do it again. And that's what keeps us coming back because we're psychotic. <laughs> <laughs> we, like, I love forget, that. That's a great analogy. The trauma. Yeah, we forget the trauma. But um, yeah, it, I, think, I think listening to people um, and like from a professional perspective, I think often and not get too wrapped up in like how you would want it. How yeah. does your client want to receive yeah. this information? What's going to be the easiest way? Um, we, all, we always consider ourselves a, an extension of the organization that we're working with. Sure. And that's why our scope changes so much depending on who we're, who we're yeah. assisting. Austin, we will conclude with one final question and it's a positive one. Um, you know, what is one positive takeaway that you hope everyone kind of holds close to the vest as they, as we kind of, Emerge as a society moving forward. Yeah. Um, one thing that we are trying to do is really try to have more of a work-life balance. Yeah. Blue Mom Blue has um, grown, like, doubled and tripled every year in business. Um, and so, you know, and when it's happening, you just have to get through, you just have to get through, you just have to get through and I, I we are making a conscious effort to try and like not stay late um like yeah. super late every night and yeah. like truly the pace that we were going pre-pandemic was was not sustainable and I had two more like right now we're down to three but before prior to that we did have two other people working here yeah. um and it was still you know late nights at least once a week yeah yeah yeah, I'm definitely striving for a better work-life balance. So I think that's something I also hope that we we take with us. And I, I think there's like a certain level of respect for family time and for family obligations that we lost pre-pandemic that I think everyone has now hopefully brought to the fore again, especially considering so many were trying to do remote schooling and balancing. So I, yeah, I think Austin, that's a really good takeaway. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's, that's our goal. Well, Austin, this has been really such a pleasure. You are, you're so vivacious and fun. And I, I hope we get to see each other next in like human form. Yes, for sure. This was really fun. So thank you for contributing. Your thank time. you for inviting me on.